Hey guys, welcome back. I hope y'all had a wonderful weekend. It was such a very nice weekend. I'm Miss Hicks, fifth grade reading. So let's start with a little word work. All right, we're going to use our knowledge, our combined knowledge of all letter sound correspondence, syll syllabication patterns, and morphology to read accurate, unfamiliar multisyllabic words in context and out of context. Question. How can I figure out new words by breaking it down into parts? You know, sometimes we have the sentences and we can figure out what's being said, what words we don't know from the context. But sometimes these questions, they just ask, what does this word mean? And we have no idea. So I told you we're going to work with some Greek and Latin roots. So let's start. Our first Greek and Latin root is mal. Okay. Now remember, a root is not like a prefix or a suffix. It's just a group of letters, sounds that have a, a root in Greek or Latin. Okay, so mal means bad or abnormal. Okay, let's look at some words. I have malware, malnutrition, and malicious. Okay, and malware and malnutrition, it kind of works as a prefix because you have malware. And we know like software, okay? Well, malware, do you know what that is? If it's bad, because we said that's what it meant, or abnormal, it's bad or abnormal where? So I have it in a sentence, let's see. The computer crashed after it was infected with malware. Now let's think about that sentence, what do you know? If your computer crashes, is that a good thing? Well, if you, maybe if your parent would buy you a new one, it might be, but generally it's a bad thing and it never happens at a good time. Okay, so this is due to bad software, malicious software, okay? How about malnutrition? Again, mal means what? Bad, mal means bad, so this is bad nutrition. Well, okay, we know about nutrition, we hear about that from time to time. Let's look at it in a sentence. Because she couldn't, could not hold anything down, the girl was worried about malnutrition. Hmm, in that sentence, could not hold anything down. What's going on? Yeah, she probably has a stomach bug or something and she's throwing up. That's not good. She's obviously been doing it for a long period of time. That would make her worry about her nutrition. Nutrition, the good things that we, we eat, okay, to make our body grow and go. All right, so what about malicious? All right, that doesn't have like the base word. Okay, it kind of, it's kind of like a prefix and a suffix put together. Ishus is like the possessing or condition of. So possessing something that's bad or abnormal. Well, let's look at its sentence. His reputation was ruined by the malicious gossip. Well, there's some words in there we need to know. What is reputation? Yes, that is what people think about you and what, you, and what others perceive you as. Okay. So your reputation, you want that to be good, but if somebody is talking bad, remember Mal's bad, if they're talking bad and they're spreading gossip, that's not good, okay? So malicious is a very not good act, okay? Let's look at another Greek and Latin root. Aster, okay? Hmm, I'm trying to think. What do I know? What words do I know? Well, let's look at what aster means. I think probably most of you know it means star. Okay, so now can you come up with some words? Yes, astronaut, asteroid, okay? Well, I have, both, I have astronaut, but I also have an asterisk down there. Not sure if anybody knows what that is. You might, but let's look at astronaut, okay? Again, star, let's look at it in a sentence. Ever since he was a young boy, the astronaut was interested in outer space and the stars in the sky, okay? So he was interested in all the celestial beings up in the sky, in the nighttime sky, daytime sky too, okay? So star. Now asterisk, that's the one I thought maybe you might not know, okay? Again, star. So let's think about, wonder if it looks like the stars that we draw. Sometimes it's used in our multiplication problems when the teacher has to tell you three times something, okay? She marked the new vocabulary words with an asterisk, and then I have the little star sitting out there. That is an asterisk, and you use asterisks to cite evidence, 
to denote something that's important, okay? I'm sure you've probably learned about that in writing, or if not, you will soon, going into sixth grade. Let's look at another. Speck. Hmm. Not like a little speck of dirt. It means look. Okay. So can you think of any words that you know that might start or have speck in it? We're going to look at a word later that has spec in it. But let's look at two words that start spec. Spectacles and spectator. Okay, spectacles again, look. Miss Hicks has to use her spectacles when she's reading. Okay, because she needs to look. She needs to see what she's reading. It's an old-fashioned word. We don't generally use it a lot in today's everyday language. All right, but let's look at the sentence. Before he had decided what to do, James raised his head, pushed his spectacles back on his nose, and looked at him intently before he decided. All right, what about spectator? Okay, again, spec means look, and we talked about OR meaning those who do, so spectator, somebody who's looking, when might you be a spectator? Let's look at the sentence. The spectators lined the streets and cheered as the parade passed by. If you're a spectator, you're looking on at the action, okay? A lot of times you go to maybe football games or baseball games or soccer games or concerts and you would be a spectator, okay? Good job. So we learned three new Greek and Latin roots. We learned mal, which means bad, very good, and we learned spec, which means look, good job, and then we also learned aster, which meant star, okay, so remember those, write them down if you need to, all right, let's look at our reading, what are we supposed to be doing in reading this week, our objective is to describe how a narrator or speaker's point of view influences how events are described, okay, your essential question, what made the author choose this point of view? Okay, now I know in earlier grades you learned about point of view and that it meant the way the author lets you see and hear the text. Okay, see and hear the text. Well, if I'm reading it to myself, how am I seeing and hearing? I always tell my children, when you are reading, you need to be playing a movie in your head so that you are seeing what is being said. Okay? So we have several different po kinds of point of view. We're just going to look at kind of two quick ones. The first point of view is when the character tells the story, you get a unique perspective of events taking place in the story. You get a unique idea of what's going on. The reader gets to see and hear that character's own opinion and his feelings. And this tends to affect the way the story is told. Okay, if I'm upset about something, I'm going to tell it in a bad way. If I'm happy, I'm going to tell it in a good way. If you're just observing it, you don't know those emotions. So you're just going, you're going to tell it from what you saw. Okay, we call that third person point of view. Okay, this is when a narrator is outside of the story and the reader gets to know what multiple characters are feeling or thinking. The reader gets to experience parts of the story even when the main character isn't present. Hmm. Okay. An example might be I read Harry Potter not too long ago, and at the very beginning, they were taking Harry Potter to his, to his aunt and uncle's house. Well, Harry Potter was a baby. He couldn't tell us what was going on, so we learned about it from others' point of view. Harry Potter was the main character, but he couldn't tell us because he's a baby. What do babies do? They cry. So we couldn't, we couldn't know what was he was feeling, so we had to hear from other characters, okay? Now let's talk about perspective. This is the one I said we were going to come back to later. What do you see in perspective? You see spec. What does spec mean? It means to look. So perspective is the way you see something. And perspective is different for each person. Hmm. What do you mean, Miss Hicks? That's crazy. We're all in the same room. How can we have different perspectives? Well, different people view different things in different ways. It depends on your 
background? What do you know? What's happened to you in the past? Okay, I want to look at some pictures. This one is a rainy day. It's raining really hard. You know, we talk about with writing and our choice of words, pictures do the same thing. This is not a good, good thing. She's wearing black and it's raining really hard. She's, on a, she's probably going to work or coming home from work. It's not good. Well, let's look at this next picture. The colors are bright and vivid. The author would be using wonderful, happy words because this person is very happy that it's raining. They're going to go out. They're going to play. Okay. What about this picture? What's his perspective on rain? He's a farmer. He's growing his crops. You see the dust. Does he need the rain? Yeah, he needs the rain. So this is a rainy day. Three different perspectives. Okay. Let's look at another one, a soccer game. You might think, okay, it's a soccer game. We're all there. Well, yeah, but you have two different teams, two different things going on. Let's look at this picture. Okay. We have three different perspectives in this picture also. Look at the goalie. Is he relaxed? No. He's thinking, oh my gosh, I got to get this ball. I hope my defender gets the ball before I do. Okay, and I don't have to worry about it being shot over my head or over to the side. Well, then you have the um, Indiana college player in his white uniform, and he's going for the goal. He hopes that he gets the goal. Maybe they're behind by one, or maybe this would be the winning goal. All kinds of things could be going through his head. Look at the UCLA college guy in blue. He's not hoping the goal goes in. He's hoping he can come in and maybe do a slide kick and get the ball away. Something. Three totally different perspectives at the exact same moment in time. The others were three different days, three different amounts of rain, three different perspectives. Well, this is three different perspectives in the exact same moment in time. Okay? Let's look at it in words. See what you see. Okay? We have two different perspectives. Dad tells Adam and Mary that they're going on a road trip to California from Mobile. And I bet right now I have some kids out there going, I don't want to go. That's a long road trip. And then I've got some kids are going, oh, California, that's incredible. It's sunny. It's great. I really want to go out there. Well, let's look how Adam and Mary reacted. Mary thought that that was a great idea. They would get to stop in San Antonio, maybe see the Alamo, not to mention some of Big Ben. Uh, mountains, da Big Ben, Davis Mountains, and some cool caverns. So she's like some of y'all. She's excited. A road trip. This is great. If we flew, we'd just go from here to there. This way they get to stop and explore. She's excited. So Adam, Adam was not looking forward to 32 hours in the car with his little sister. He also gets car sick. His tri this trip is, was going to take forever. He was, he was not looking forward to California, or he was looking forward to California, just not the trip there or back. Same situation, same moment in time, two different perspectives. Another one. Shannon and Chris's grandpa decided to buy a kitten for companionship. Who doesn't love a cute little kitten? Who wouldn't lo love a pet? Lots of work. But it's cute, cuddly, sweet. Let's see what they thought. Chris wanted to know why Grandpa wanted to know wh why would Grandpa choose a kitten? A puppy would have been better. I could play ball, fetch, and teach him to sit. Cats don't do that. So if Chris thinks it's a, it's a bad idea, using our evidence from before, Shannon must think a kitten might be fun. Shannon was glad that Grandpa decided to get a kitten. Kittens are so adorable and playful. She will play with toys and snuggle. Two perspectives about the exact same thing. Okay, so we've been, you've been told, you've, we've talked about perspective a little bit. Now I want you to think, I've got a story for us. And I want you to think you're all in fifth grade and you're about to go to sixth grade. What are your feelings? What do you think? What do you think you'll feel about your first day of sixth grade? What 
what might you think? Some kids, I'm sure, are excited. They love, they're going to be excited because they're going to have all these new friends. They're going to get to play sports or they're going to get to do robotics or, or they're going to get to do computers. They're so excited. But now some kids are nervous. Well, now this is from a different point of view. This is from the school, okay? School's first day of school. Hmm, that's a different viewpoint. Let's look. School's first day of school. The story is by Adam Rex, and the pictures are by Christian Robinson, or the illustrator. The author is Adam Rex. The illustrator is Christian Robinson. That summer, they dug up the big field and poured the foundation and set brick on top of brick until they'd built a school. A sign above the door read, Frederick Douglass Elementary. That's a good name for me, thought the school. So who's telling us this story? Yeah, the school. We're going to learn about it from the school, what the school thinks. Most days, a man named Janitor came to mop the school and buff his floors and wash his windows. This is nice, the school said to Janitor. Just the two of us. Won't be, won't be just us for long, said Janitor. Soon the teachers will come, and then you'll be filled with children. Hmm, wonder if he's excited about that. The school cracked. Children? All kinds of children. They'll come to play games and to learn. Oh, said the school. Will you be there? You'll see me after the school day is over, said Janitor. Don't worry, you'll like the children. But the school thought that Janitor was probably wrong about that. School sound happy? Anxious? Nervous? Yeah, a little anxious. They, then they came, the children did, and there were more of them than the school could possibly of imagined. They got everywhere. They opened and closed all his doors and lockers and drank water from his fountains and played on his jungle gym. So that's what that is for, thought the school. Some of the older kids gathered by the school's back fence and showed each other their board faces. This place stinks, said one, and the school <gasps> gasped. I hate school, said another with puffy hair to the agreement of his friends. Mm, the school sagged a little. One very small girl with freckles didn't want to come inside the school at all. Her mother had to carry her. I must be awful, the school whispered to himself. Later, he squirted the puffy-haired kid in the face. Then he felt bad about it afterward. He watched the kindergarten kid sit on one of his rugs. The teacher said, as we go around the circle, please tell us your name. There was an Aiden, a Max, and a Belle, and an Emma, and a Caden, and a Chloe. The small girl with freckles was next, but she wouldn't speak. She only stared at her shoes until the teacher moved on. I don't like school, she whispered into her lap. Well, thought the school, maybe it doesn't like you either. The children were in their chairs, finally, but just as the school was starting to relax, his fire alarm sounded, and all the children exited and walked to the other side of the field and stared at him. How do you think that made him feel? He was so embarrassed, he held his doors open for them when they returned. Sorry, he said, as the first child entered. Sorry, sorry, 
Sorry, he told them all, even the girl with the freckles. It was 12 o'clock and school was filled with food. It was 12.30 and the school was filled with garbage. At one table, a boy told a funny joke and another boy laughed so hard that milk came out of his nose. Now I'm covered with nose milk, thought the school. He had to admit that it was a pretty funny joke, though. Even the girl with freckles liked it. After lunch, the kindergarten kids learned about shapes. A rectangle has four sides, said the teacher. One, two, three, four. And a square has four sides, too. In fact, a square is actually a special kind of rectangle. Wow, said the school. I did not know that. Afterward, the children made pictures with glitter and paste. The girl with freckles made a picture of the school. It looks just like me, thought the school, except glittery. It's like she's known me all my life. Do you think I could have your picture? The teacher asked her. Don't tell anyone, but I think it's the best. The school thought she was probably right about that. The freckled girl smiled when the teacher stuck her drawing onto the school wall with the pushpin. Ouch, said the school, but he didn't mind, not really. At 3 o'clock, the parents came to pick up the children. At 3.30, janitor, janitor came to pick up the school. It was full of kids, the school told him, and I heard a joke, and I accidentally had a fire drill, but everyone was nice about it, and I listened to a classroom and learned about shapes. You had a big day, said janitor. Do you think, the school said, do you think you can invite everyone to come back tomorrow, especially that little freckled girl? Janitor added, I'll see what I can do. Later, janitor sat on top of the school and they watched the sun go down. In the beginning, I didn't know what I, what I was, said the school. I thought I was your house. Nope, said janitor. I, I suppose some other place gets to be your house, the school added. Janitor nodded. That's true, but you get to be a school. That's lucky. And the school thought he was probably right about that. The end. Okay, so we learned about the perspective of school from the school's point of view. So how did the school's perspective change? How was his view at the beginning of school and how did it go to the end of school? Yes, in the beginning he was worried and he was nervous and he was scared and he even did some scary things and then he thought he must be bad because nobody liked him and the little girl had to be carried in. But then what happened? She drew a picture of him and he learned lots of stuff and maybe the people weren't so bad after all because they didn't make fun of him for making his fire alarm go off. So he loved school. He was excited about the children. He was no longer nervous. How did the students feel about the school? Some of them were excited. Some of them loved to come and play and be with their friends. The little girl with freckles, she wasn't excited, but did she warm up closer to the end? Yeah, she did. She said she didn't like school, but yet she drew a picture of school and it was all glittery. So yeah, she got to where she liked it. Now, how would the story be different if told from the puffy-headed boy's perspective? You think he would talk good about the school? I don't think so. He got squirted with the with the um with the water fountain and he didn't like it, he didn't want to be there. One more question. How would the story be different if it was told from the freckled little girl's perspective? Think about it. She would talk about how she did, was being carried in and how it was not a good day. Okay, so these are our, some things about perspective and how different people have a different perspective of different things. We're going to look at another story on Thursday, two stories that talk about the same account, but they have different views. Okay, see you Thursday.